Welcome in everyone, I'm Slayer. Today we're going to discuss decals. We're going to talk about what they are, how to use them, and how useful they can be for your builds. As you can see in the before and after that you're watching now, they can be extremely helpful in creating environments. So if you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below, leave comments for feedback, and if you'd like to see us building live, check us out at twitch.tv slash slay3k. So here you can see I've laid out a bunch of decals that we can use. We're going to do just a couple different areas just to show you how decals can operate, some tricks for using them, and how they can really liven up your detailing. Decals can be super useful in creating different textures underneath props or vegetation. They help create fades from different textures or different terrains to another. I liken them to stickers that you can adhere to the terrain and create variation. However, these decals tend to come with some level of transparency embedded that you can then fade them into the ground. This is a really important feature and makes decals so much more usable across the map. So let's dive into a couple of scenarios for how you can use decals. I've set up a park, a little courtyard, a construction site, parking lot, and an alleyway just to show some different variations in the decals and how you can go about using them. I will say this though, that no matter how much I show you here, there's so much more you can do with decals. This is really an intro level of how you can utilize them in different spaces. Let's get started with the park. So manicured grass. This is a great asset to show terrain that is well cared for. It's mowed, lines are perfect. You can use this in parks, maybe in a backyard. Now what's important is that you make sure the lines match up. By holding down control, I can make finer adjustments and I get rid of the selection view on move it. See how the blue circle has disappeared there? That way I can get them perfectly lined up. Additionally, you don't want these to overlap. With some decals, it'll create a hard line and a highlighted area where they're stacked on top of one another. So for example, look at the grass. See in the middle, you have a bar where it's clearly overlapped. That doesn't look organic, so we don't want it here. Now, once you get your decals set up, let's talk about fading the decals. We're gonna highlight all three of these and we're actually gonna use page down and page up to position them vertically. By hitting page down, the asset is gonna sink into the ground. That'll cause the decal to fade. This can create more realistic appearances rather than an oversaturated decal. So if you ever see an oversaturated decal and you're wondering what to do with it, I would try fading it before you just discard it because sometimes it'll look great when it's just dropped in the ground a little bit. Now from here, we're gonna duplicate the same lines through the park. I'm gonna highlight bigger sections to speed up the process. Keep in mind, you can use prop line tool to line these up. I'll show that a little bit later. The only trick is making sure the distance between assets is set properly. If you're relatively new to move it, definitely check out the video on our channel that goes over functionality and how to use it. Now there could be one challenge with using decals and that's overlapping. Overlapping things like roads and paths may not be ideal. So we have to figure out ways to make decals either fit within a space or we can use procedural objects. Now procedural objects is a pretty big mod and allows you to do a lot of different things, but it's pretty complex. We're gonna use it for a very simple function and that is to trim the top of a decal. So using move it, I can convert the decal to a procedural object. Then I can use the vertical height adjustment in procedural objects to get the same height as the other decals that I've already placed for the park. Now we're gonna go a step further. By hitting customization, I then get presented with nodes for each corner of the asset. Here's where you can then begin to adjust shapes of an asset. I'm gonna take the top nodes by holding control and selecting all four of them. I can drag all four nodes and there's four because it's a 3D object. So you have top and bottom. So to keep the decal from bleeding over, I'm gonna select the top nodes, hit page down so that the decal becomes more flat. Then we just adjust the top four nodes to the edge of the terrain grass. Once we've got that lined up, then we can just duplicate the asset using move it. So we'll take this, we'll duplicate it across the top using pretty much the same method we've already used, getting it lined up. And you'll see that the asset automatically adjusts to the first asset that we're copying in terms of the size and scale that we set in procedural objects. So there you go, we have our first field done. You can see how this creates a nice manicured looking space. It also covers up some of the repetitive nature of just normal terrain. Even when using the mixer to create really nice textures for your terrain, you'll notice some repetition and this can help with that. But using manicured grass can also just set an area off, making it look clean and well kept. But let's show a different way to do it. We're gonna take this dry grass and we're gonna place this on the second portion of the park and we're gonna mix a couple of decals just to show you a different variation on what you can do with decals in general. Much like the manicured grass decals, we're gonna take this, we're gonna fade it into the ground. Then it starts to look like the grass is dry, but still mowed, um, a little bit patchy. Now I'm gonna mix it with another grass decal that's got a little bit more of a patchy look. 
and we can add this in to create areas that have even more wear and tear. This is a good way to set up areas like where you might have an auditorium or something like that. So let's say all the visitors would be on the lawn. You can add areas that have more wear and tear for where people would be sitting or have their chairs set up to watch a performance. Keep this in mind if you had benches or something like that in the grass, maybe applying a worn grass decal to show traffic traveling to the benches. Now you can see how this gets repetitive with duplication. It just takes a certain amount of practice and polish to try to keep it from being too repetitive. Ultimately, try to limit the area if you have to. Use a couple of decals just to break it up. You can also dip certain ones further into the ground to create different fades and level of transparency just to continue to add variety. I think what's really important is just figuring out what you want the area that you're decaling or even doing detail work in general to appear as. Is it meant to be some manicured field or is it meant to be just a maybe not as well kept patch of grass? Once you decide that, figuring out what decals you need to download or to place will be a little bit easier. Showing you this also shows you the depth at which you can really do decals. You can insert a ton of different decals to create the textures you want. It can be a little bit overwhelming for large areas, so just keep that in mind. Where and when to use these can be really critical, especially when you're trying to conserve some of your computer for other assets. One of my tips for doing areas like this with any sort of decal is just try to make it look as organic as possible. You can see when we zoom out, it looks like a patchy field. I think just keeping it as random and inconsistent helps with the organic nature of it. We could tweak this all day though. But this creates just a nice variety from the manicured grass. You can see how that stands out. Now each one sort of catches your attention in its own way, but now there's variety. So imagine using these different decals in different areas of your city. Maybe the manicured grass belongs in a high-end park, whereas the patchy look appeals more to a space that's less taken care of. So the grass details are sort of like terrain changers, right? Well, here's another version of that, and that would be something more man-made. For example, brick or stone that you can apply to pavement to create courtyards. An important tip before you get too far into setting these decals up is to align them. You can align them to segments of roads nearby or the building itself. I'm gonna use the road segment, align the first couple of decals, and then I'm gonna duplicate from there to ensure that our decals are all lined up in the space. Now, in a lot of these type spaces, you'll have the base terrain of pavement, which is fine, but it tends to get dull after a while, it's repetitive. Whereas adding something like brick decals or stone decals can really add some variety and set off areas much like the grass did. We can place this in this courtyard and suddenly this is gonna stand out more than the rest. You don't need to do it everywhere, but every so often when you have that pocket of space where maybe you have a fountain or some benches set up, this can be a really nice feature. Now in general, what I would recommend is taking something like a fence or a curb to give an edge to the decals. Now, in this case, I'm actually using a prop fence. This is important because if you use a network item, typically the decals will overlap and stretch the decal. That can look not as appealing. So you could still use the network fence, but you may just have to be really careful about positioning because you'll notice that if the decal gets too close to something that is standing vertically, that is a network item, you'll start to see the decal stretch onto the planes of that asset. Now, as we fill the space up, you can imagine chairs, benches, maybe a cafe here. Obviously, I just want to make sure that you can see what this area could look like with decals. From there, you could detail it any way you please. Decals do not affect gameplay, so it's not going to affect people walking on them or anything like that. Like I said earlier, they're very much like stickers. So if Sims are set up to walk over an area, for example, a path, they'll do so like normal. These just basically change the texture on top and that's it. Occasionally what I'll do is I'll make paths out of decals. They won't be functional, but they'll still supplement the appearance so you can give variety in terms of what paths you have available for Sims to walk. So there we have it. We have a nice courtyard on the inside of this building where we would normally have gray pavement or asphalt. It appears different. It sets itself off. Now you could throw in a ton of props and make this more lively. You could even throw sim generators or people generators in here to give more activity with sims actually moving within the area. But from a visual perspective, it looks different. It stands out. Now, so far our examples are pretty straightforward, but how can we continue to add to what decals could do for us? Well, let's look at the construction site. So I've already added a base layer of gravel using surface painter and brushes. Now I wanna add the dirt decals over that. This is important. If you had pavement or grass, it's gonna show through the decal a little bit and that's not ideal. 
So by using Surface Painter and giving it a base layer of terrain to work with, we're already setting ourselves up to make this area look way better. So now that we don't have pavement poking through the main construction site, let's show how we can do the edges. I'm gonna use this dirt road decal. This is great because it has a nice little fade on the edge and I can place it on the edge of the pavement where it meets the dirt itself. I talk a lot about transitioning from one type of environment to another and having decals with fades on the edges can make that happen for you. Given that the space is meant to be a little bit more organic with it being dirt, we suddenly are able to make it look like dirt has scattered beyond the containment area of the construction site. Now, dirt and mud decals are some of my favorite. You can use them for a variety of things. In fact, you can actually use them to cover up roads. For example, if I take a dirt road that's from base game, create a small segment here, I can take the decal of mud and place it over and then suddenly it really stands out. There's so much more texture involved. There's puddles with reflections of light. It looks really good. We can use this for our entrance into the construction space. Now you notice the colors of the dirt are slightly different, but because we have that base layer of surface painter, we can dial down the new decal we're adding and kind of blend it in a little better. With just a couple taps of page down, suddenly the colors look a little bit closer. Now we can take a smaller mud decal to create a little bit of spillover of the dirt and mud onto the road. That also covers up the slightly harsh lines given to the pavement where we created the break to the street. We can duplicate this to create fades around the new mud decal we've added to make it stand out a little less that the coloring is slightly different. But now we have a used and worn out entrance into our construction site. So I'm gonna use a couple variations of dirt and mud decals to create texture all the way throughout. We want it to look very uneven, very bumpy, like tracks have been through it. I tend to use the one decal that looks like it has tracks a lot in these type of spaces, just so it looks like trucks have been moving throughout the area. There's a lot of high traffic spots. I'll duplicate these and kind of flip them around so it looks like the tracks are a little more continuous and then the decals don't look as repetitive. Mixing these in, we can get the space covered with a base layer of decals. But really quickly, there you have it. You have a completely different surface now that's dynamic and interesting, not as flat. So let's talk about the corners where I've actually placed some weeds and grass. It looks fine over the surface painter texture of gravel, but let's add a little something to that. By utilizing this dirt grass mix, I can place it under the weeds and suddenly you have a much better texture for an area that's not really used that doesn't support heavy traffic. It's left a little untouched. It's just grass is growing there and that's it. Doing something like this, as simple as that, makes an area appear drastically different. The environment has changed. I think it's really important with decals. And this kind of segues into another form of using decals, and that is decay. Decals really give us the ability to create worn out spaces. As you notice, without using Theme Mixer in the base game, it's tough to get that look of maybe an area that's been worn down or destroyed over time. Think about roads, and when you're driving on roads or in parking lots, how much wear and tear there is. But with the base game, you're not going to see a lot of that. Using Theme Mixer, you can actually set yourself up to have some of those sort of textures already implemented on your map or in your city. But with decals, you can take it to a whole nother level. So let's start by taking a bigger decal that shows wear and tear stains to the concrete. Dropping this in immediately, you have a texture added that looks like it's been there, that there's been wear. It's a high traffic area. It doesn't really give you cracks, but we can add those later. Now, like I mentioned, Theme Mixer can give you some base cracks and stuff like that in either pavement or asphalt. I highly recommend checking out Theme Mixer for that purpose. It'll lower the amount of decals you need while giving you enough texture that it looks a little more realistic. Now, let's see how we can fill the parking lot space a little bit with some variety. We're going to take some cracks and wear and tear that we can add, and you can duplicate these all over the place. You can flip them around. You can combine them a little bit just to create different types of surfaces where asphalt or pavement exist. Now, much like we did with the other decals, you can drop these into the surface a little bit using page down and move it. That can help you fade them a little bit and create even more variety. Layering decals is also a little bit tricky. Sometimes you'll notice a little bit of a flicker when you're moving the camera around. There's a couple things you can do about that. Really what it's trying to figure out is what decal should be on top. So you can raise and lower each decal to figure out which one will stop the flicker if you put one beneath the other using page down, page up and move it. Additionally, you could also use procedural objects and see if that would help actually set which decal should be on top or on bottom. Now, if you have parking lot roads mod, you'll notice that there is uh, a worn down parking lot option. With big parking lot assets, 
there isn't it just matches your asphalt so that's why we're going to really focus here and try to make this look a little more down i'm going to take a couple different stains and apply those throughout and you can already tell that it looks like a more used space it looks like it's been sitting there in the hot sun we've added stains that look like water and drainage has uh, been moving along the plane now if i open decals under find it you can see that there's just an endless possibility of decals like it goes on forever it's really going to depend on what you want to do and how much you want to add and invest into creating these types of textures in your city we can do everything from adding oil stains puddles cracks we can add where roads have been repaired we can add different styles of wear and tear on roads once you decide how much you want to invest in doing decal work you can figure out how many decals you're going to need one important factor is is when you subscribe to a new decal check it on your next load into your city to make sure that the scaling looks right to make sure there's clarity in the decal and it just doesn't look a little bit awkward you want it to match your theme too um, that's really important if it doesn't match or align with what you're trying to do then you probably don't need it at least not right now this can help with asset management i tend to go through mine occasionally to unsubscribe to ones that i'm not using enough or that don't fit my build but i also keep a solid inventory because i find different uses for some for example, certain dirt textures might be really good for certain areas that maybe don't apply to just putting it over a uh, dirt space. One of my favorite assets lately has been using the decal where it looks like they've repaired cracks in asphalt. You can use these repeatedly. It's almost a struggle not to use them too much, but I tend to use them a lot in alleyways or near road transitions where we go from one size road to another. Intermixing decals, like I've mentioned earlier, can create these different environments. You can show lower income spaces by just how well the road is taken care of. It's not just about the buildings itself, but creating the environment around that. And I think that's where decals are extremely important and beneficial for your city, especially if you have just such a variety of different spaces and environments. And by utilizing decals in the right way, you can create decay. And decay is something that's so important because that exists in real life. And to create something that looks real, we have to kind of mimic reality, right? So I think decals are one of the most important factors in being able to create that. Vegetation is also something you can utilize to create decay. Having grass come through potholes or intermixing your dirt decals with a little splotch of weeds or something like that, you further get the idea that you can create worn out spaces that haven't been well kept up. And if you do, hop in our Discord, share a photo, throw a link in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys create. It helps inspire me to come up with new ideas and figure out different ways of either teaching people or creating things in my builds. Obviously, we've talked a lot about environments, but giving your city a little more personality can be as simple as adding some decals and props that are associated with making things look worn out and beat up, not so perfect. Um, and again, that's an extension of what we can do from the base game, right? By adding these type of assets, we can give it the personality and make it seem more realistic and imperfect. So by layering in different cracks and road repair, we've created a worn out road and a parking lot that's obviously seen better days. Now, what you're beginning to see is the fine details that decals can offer you. You have everything from hash lines to no parking text, loading zone text. You can see how granular some of the decals can be. Everything from cracks to simple little marks in the concrete exist. You can start to tailor things like parking lots to service certain buildings specifically. Maybe your parking lot has some sort of loading zone at the side entrance or something like that. Maybe you want a drop off area. With decals, you can customize your streets, your parking lots, or your sidewalks to accommodate that sort of thing. Sometimes I need to create false parking lots. And what I mean by that is the parking spaces are actually decals, they're not functional. Think of a space that you can't fit a parking lot in that's actually functional, and you have to insert something like that instead. And when I do that, I'll typically go in and add my own handicap parking using decals. Now let's discuss a couple finer detail options. Similar to how we've used cracks in the road, you can add drains. There's horizontal drains or manhole covers, for example. It could just be another texture you add in your roads, similar to cracks and stuff like that. It's another detail, creates another layer of realism. Now, one thing I don't have a great example of in the video is covering up mistakes. Sometimes when you have road textures that meet and look a little bit funky, like you can't get them to quite blend right, they're a network, so you're limited, you can use decals to cover up edges. So for example, drains can be used to cover up edges of other decals or where two different types of roads meet. Keep in mind, you can layer some of these decals in pretty easily and create a repeating pattern. The most time consuming aspect of this is just finding where to place and getting them angled properly. Keep in mind using move it and aligning to certain segments that are on point for where you are 
can be extremely helpful and very efficient. Now, if you're looking at another way of aligning, you have prop line tool. Let's say we copy a decal with move it. Obviously, it's a little bit tough to get it aligned perfectly straight. You may have to play with it a little bit to get in position and use some of the move it tools. But there's another option out there for you, and that's prop line tool. That's actually a mod that will allow you to place different assets in a line with varying degrees of space between. If you're subscribed to prop line tool and it's activated, you can select an asset, click the three bars down at the bottom of your toolbar, and you'll get a panel that you can set a distance where a prop line tool will then space your assets. It's extremely handy and quick for laying out multiple decals efficiently and evenly. Now the decal we have here is really helpful when you're out in front of a shop or just in an area where you wanna add something like trees, you create little cutouts basically in the concrete. One of the next assets that I use pretty often is mulch. I use mulch for manicured beds, for flowers or trees. These can go in the corner of parks, in front of houses. There's a couple variations of sizes like small, medium, large. I like to use the mulch decals underneath primarily green plants so that the grass and plant have some sort of separation, a layer between them. The decals are great for that. They provide you with the separation without doing anything crazy. You don't have to use a planter every time you want to plant flowers and your flowers don't have to be planted directly into grass. You could go around the entire edge of the park and add mulch and create little areas or pockets of flower beds. You can also use poppable surfaces. Decals will stick to the poppable surface much like it would in normal terrain. This way you can create much larger planters or even tiered planters that can be elevated above normal terrain height. And if you're curious about my addiction to decals and want to see us using them live and how we can utilize them across multiple different areas of a city, again, check us out at twitch.tv slash slate3k. Decals are such an important part of my build. I feel like I'm using them constantly and we're always looking for new ways to place them and new purposes behind them. Now, finally, let's talk about just some odds and ends. You have things like tire decals. You can set up at entrances or turns into construction sites, for example. Some other assets, for example, water puddles can be helpful around certain areas because they have reflections. So they look really good if you're taking cinematics or screenshots of your city. There's just an incredible amount of options. Another not as popular asset that I've found is expansion joints with grass. You can use this up against buildings or to create lines on curbs. My current city that I focus on is actually a northeastern harbor city taking place in the autumn. So I've started using decals of leaves underneath trees to show the changing of the season. Your workshop in this case is going to be your best friend for finding the assets that you need to create these sort of environments and add this level of detail. With this tutorial, I definitely wanted to give you some tips and tricks on how I use decals and how they can be used through your city. But I think it's also important to give you an idea of what's all out there. Maybe you're not familiar with some of the options that you can use to detail your city, or maybe you're just not sure where to begin. Regardless of what the reason is, you can see what it can add to your city on a detailing level. My goal is to make detailing a little more accessible for folks. So doing tutorials based on different assets you can use, different techniques is a lot of fun for me. If you have any suggestions for another tutorial, throw them in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys think or what you guys would like to see. If you've enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the subscribe button. I hope to see you guys around. And until next time, take care.